behind the scenes yeah. coverage. Okay. I like to focus more on the little guy. Yeah. So. That's cool. Or more girl. Yeah. Not little, but in this case, yes. <laughs> no, I know you mean. Okay. I am here with the one and only Miss Bonnie Burton, also known as Zena, of course. Okay. And you're definitely no stranger to the esports scene. Can you give us a little background on your history? How did you get in to gaming first and foremost? Well, basically, when I was 12 years old, my brothers dragged me into playing Halo, and I didn't really want to, but I started playing with them. And then um, after that, we started going to tournaments, and we would practice all the time. We went to the very first Major League Gaming tournament, which was in a land center with 80 people. And, you know, it's crazy to see that MLG has grown to this and that eSports has grown to this because back then it was, you know, just PC gaming and it was nothing like this. Now, you were a competitive Halo player yourself and you actually had some noticeable or notable placings themselves. Do you remember which events those were at and where you guys placed? Yeah, I remember specifically the big event for us was MLG Dallas, actually. I think it was 2007. Okay. It was a while ago. So you're a veteran, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I went, the first event I went to was in 2003, so that was a while ago. But 2007, we made um, top 16 AM bracket, so we were top 32 overall. And um, Smiley and I were the first girls, actually, so that was, that was pretty memorable. What was the point in time for you where your business or your involvement started transitioning to maybe what you're kind of doing now? Um, well, I competed for about five years from when I was 12 to 17, and then I was about to go to college, and Halo 3 was coming out, and I just decided that, you know, okay, I'm kind of going to focus on my studies now and focus on college, and because I had done, you know, major league gaming this whole time. Um, so I think that was my transition point. And then also a year later, I started getting into more of the business side of it and working for companies instead of competing. So it's kind of fun because I get to come back to the events and I still get to be here and see everyone and be involved with esports. But I'm here, you know, working instead of competing, which sometimes is a little sad because competing was fun. But, you know, it's good to to work too. And it's a fun work. We also know that you were actually the G4 uh, I want to say it was the, I don't I want to say X-Girl, but it was the G4, I forget what the title was. Yeah, it was a G4 booth, babe, and I was voted that online, and that was large, largely in thanks to the MLG community, actually, um, really, because it was an online voting thing. They went on and voted for me because they knew I was a previous professional gamer, um, and then I was able to go to E3, Comic-Con a few different times, and that was a really cool experience because I had never been there before, so that was really awesome. Okay. I'll be honest, if you don't mind the pun being intended, is that... Uh, I love the outfit uh, for you at the G-Bar. I'm sure many more did too as well. Uh, how, out of curiosity, was this, when you first saw the outfit, were, were you kind of surprised? Or better yet, did you know that the outfit was, that that outfit was going to be the one that they were going to have you wear? I was actually pretty surprised because um, I was actually, you know, pretty modest uh, before I got into working for other companies and stuff. And I was a little protective of my gamer image because I wanted people to still take me seriously as a gamer. And I didn't want people to think that I was just selling myself out. Um, but I saw it as an opportunity to go to a neat gaming convention and, you know, look pretty and put on the outfit. And so I kind of looked at it, looked at it as an opportunity just to play dress up. And you know, some people were a little frustrated, I think, by that, saying like, "Oh, wow, you sold out." But it's not that I sold out. It's just that I wanted to be a part of E3 and I wanted to be a part of all these things. And it was a, it was pretty fun. I mean, really, if anything, logically, it was just a business decision. It was something that the opportunity presented itself. It's not as though you were potentially going to be making maybe the money you are now through your gaming endeavors. So you wanted to do that in order to be able to, I guess, financially support yourself. Yeah, and just staying in the loop. I mean, I still love video games, so that's why it's still fun to be around them. So more of the esports competitive side is really just pause, not as though it's retired, but just kind of pause for now. Have you ever considered maybe getting back in? I'm sure you might get that a lot, but have you ever considered doing it, especially with Halo 4 coming out? Yeah, a lot of people have asked me that, and I don't know really, because I don't know where I would find the time, just because I'm pretty busy right now. But I think it would be fun to get back into it. Would I ever compete again? Probably not, but would I play casually and keep track of it? Yeah, I would do that. I mean, I, it's still just fun for me, right? You know? What is kind of the life of Bonnie Burden now after MLG? Um, besides MLG, you mean? Um, basically, I'm going to college and I'm studying information technology, so I'm a huge nerd. And um, 
you know, just going to school and I graduated in May, so I'm really excited about that and finding opportunities to go after that. Um, so I'm pretty normal outside of this. I'm a resident assistant, so I'm basically like a dorm mom to about 50 kids, and I love them. Damn. Yeah. 50. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're hard to keep track of, but um, they're fun. I think it's a really fun job to have too. So between them and you know keeping up with my studies and doing these events, I'm pretty busy. But you've also been to some of those E3 events and some other expos. Have you been getting into any of like the anime cosplay that we've definitely been seeing? I mean, it seems just so big. I didn't really know too much about it until, yeah. until I started doing some research. Yeah, um, well, I guess at those events, I kind of had my own cosplay since I was in those outfits, right? You know, so I kind of did cosplay, but in a different way. Um, I think I would totally do it if I was like able to make something, but I'm not crafty at all. I totally suck. So if I tried to make something, it would probably just like fall off or you know, I don't know what would happen, but it would not look good. But um, yeah, I would love to do cosplay. I dressed up as Pikachu for Halloween, and another Halloween I dressed up as Hermione, and that was a hit. So I can see that. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would do that to an event and just see if I could trick people. So I tricked some people at Halloween, you know, so that was good. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. I was actually surprised that we didn't see more Halloween costumes here at MLG just because it was pretty much right after Halloween. I know that we've seen some anime ones. It just seems that if people were dressing up in Halloween costumes come to compete, that would have been so much more awesome. Yeah, I think it would have been awesome. I've seen a lot of League of Legends costumes, though, and they're pretty epic. Has anything evolved for you as far as what you'd like to do at MLG events, maybe when you do have some free time? Um, I think it just evolved for me in a way that at first MLG events, I was, um, you know, competing, and I was really into that scene. And MLG events really didn't have vendors at first. And now it's funny that I'm here working for the vendor side of it instead of competing. So I think that in that way it sort of evolved for me. And there's just, you know, a ton more people. There's streaming. There's, like, commentators. Like, we didn't have that back in my day. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe what are some of those frequently asked questions that maybe you get? Um, a lot of people do come up and ask me. The most frequent question is, um, are you going to play again? And, you know, oh, what happened to you? You kind of just fell off. And I was like, did you die? You came back to life? And then they're really surprised that I'm here. But it is really cool when they recognize me and um, they can be like, hey, you did this in Halo 1 or you did this in Halo 2. And that was really cool. And it's especially cool when girls come up to me and say, like, that's really awesome that you did that for Halo 2 because, you know, it made me want to play more and play harder because yeah. that's neat. You know? That's awesome. So it's almost as though you're somewhat of a... A role model, not indirect role model, obviously, because now you're kind of taking up some more other sides of it, but leaving your mark on the scene and really allowing for other girl gamers to go back, watch your videos, watch your interviews, watch your own, watch your success in your own right, definitely seems as that is going to be somewhat of a confidence booster or a platform for other girl gamers to come out. Have you had the chance to interact with any other girl gamers here at Dallas so far? Yeah, um, I mean, I know all the Frag Dolls and the girl gamers there. Um, I think I've met a few other ones, but, you know, it is amazing how the scene has grown more. There's a ton more girl gamers, you know. When I was in MLG, I was the only girl gamer, and it's really cool just to see. It's common to have a girl on your team now, you know, and I think that's neat. I never, I never thought it should have been necessarily, like, concentrated on, and so it's neat to see it just quietly sort of grow. Okay. Back for a sec. When you were on the team with the two guys that you were teaming with back then and then the other girl of course I believe that was was that Smiley yeah that was Smiley yeah okay. and, the, and the two guys at the time were drummer and snake but then we would also exchange um, snake couldn't play with us so then it was me off and then we had a few other people too we I think we teamed with Pistola at one point <laughs> I would have loved to see uh, how smaller he would have looked back then what was it different than now no, no, it's about the same. And he was still just as awesome. He was great, yeah. When you thought and you were getting into the scene and you wanted to go to compete at the event, was your first thought that, hey, I need to get some guys on my team? Or were you trying to maybe shoot for an all-girl gaming team at that time? Um, I don't think I was trying to shoot for either. I was just thinking, hey, I want a sweet team. And it just sort of happened that that was the sweet team I could get. And um, originally I teamed with just guys for a while. And then Smiley came along and I was like, hey, she's really good. And that's the first thing I noticed about her. And then I was like, oh, yeah, and she's a girl. So it was cool that we had two girls on the team. Um, but the whole goal was just 
just to have like an awesome team and be able to make it to the pro bracket, which we eventually did, which was awesome. Yeah. The presentation that comes along for Girl Gamers, it just almost seems like they, because they're a minority, because the I guess they're girls, team. that People look at them a lot more and will almost try and nitpick at almost any small thing. And it's almost like girls have to be on their best behavior, so to speak, yeah. all the time. Do you kind of feel that girl gamers, at least maybe now or back then or at any time, have to be at that higher, more professional standard when they present themselves? Yeah, I do think there is a different standard just for just because people are watching you. So you can't be going around and posting nudes. You can't be posting nudes. <laughs> you can't be hooking up with people after the tournament. You can't be, you know, getting drunk every night. Like, yeah. you just have to hold yourself to a higher standard because the minute you do those things, people are gonna say that's what she's here for. She's not here to game. That's what she's here for. She's, she'd be acting voluptuous. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I just googled that, by the way. Oh, good. You know what that means. That's good. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, basically, yeah, you do just have to be good. And also, I think girl gamers have to realize that when they compete, they're not only representing themselves, they're representing all girl gamers. Because if they do bad, it's like, okay, girl gamers suck. Because all these girls on this team suck, so they're not good. And I don't think, you know, some of them understand that. I don't know if all of them do. And that's why, personally, when I was, like, not doing well anymore, I decided to step it, not, not do it anymore because... Yeah. I didn't want to represent the girl gamers in a bad light when I wasn't performing to the high standard. Jeez, you have answered so many of my questions. What a trooper that Bonnie's been. Do you see yourself as somewhat, I mean, of a role model? Have you ever had girl gamers come up to you and maybe ask for advice on maybe issues that maybe you had with previous teams before? Has anything along those lines of counseling, so to speak, you know, maybe been given? Mm -hmm. um, I've had a few girl gamers come up to me and just ask me for general tips about things, and I always like doing that because I think that's really neat. But also, I'm like, you know what, this is this is different than what I did, yeah. you know. So they kind of got to make their own decisions, and you know, they could probably give me some tips now just because things are so different. Like, I know a lot of people stream. I never streamed, you know. So doing those sort of things. That stuff was unheard of back then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had like Xbox Connect. That was like our big thing. But. Um, but yeah, so everyone kind of makes their own path. I'm happy to give advice where I can, where it can be applied. I don't want to keep you too long, but thank you. I know I am. I Is there anything that maybe has surprised you throughout the years for things that maybe MLG has added on? Mm, I'm trying to think what's surprising. I mean, it definitely has evolved, you know, from 80 people in a land center to hundreds of people and thousands of people watching on a stream online. I thought the online component was really neat um, just because you know there's so many people that actually like to watch video games and I think that's a common misconception people think video games esports will never make it because people don't like to watch but obviously people do thousands are watching online so I think that really proves a good point of how esports e esports is evolving and it has evolved what games are you playing right now just just to kind of get caught up a little more search into the current what are you doing um, I don't play anything where I'm actually good no so League of Legends? First of all. But I do play a little League of Legends. I do like League of Legends. Um, I love Lux. <laughs> and um, I tried to play StarCraft for a little bit, but that didn't go very well. Um, but yeah, I just play here and there, whatever, basically. I'm kind of looking forward to Halo 4. I was a little bit, you know, I was like, oh, how's it going to be? But I think it'll be good. What is probably one of your most favorite things? What do you enjoy about MLG events when you come here? I think I just love the community and that it brings everyone together and you know this is such you know it's kind of a hidden thing and it's unique that we all get to be together just for this passion that we have and, and I love seeing pro players interact with fans that's my favorite thing because you know you can tell these these people are so excited to meet the pro players and it's really awesome to see that they're able to connect like that. Okay. Let's say an MLG staff came up to you and they said Bonnie, Zena, Miss Burton with the blonde hair. <laughs> How is it, or if we were to ask you, what is a piece of advice, some feedback that maybe you could give MLG on something they could do better, they could improve on, pimp out, I guess however you really want to word it, what would you maybe say? Is there anything maybe you've noticed? Hmm, that's a tough one. It could be anything. It could be vendors, booths, it could be the stream, it could be the players, it could be security. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think they do a really great job on a lot of things, actually. Um, I would say they need to bring back 
Oh, I'm forgetting his name, but he would always say, lock it up. And he was like, Oh, Farouk. Farouk, yes, bring Farouk back. That's my advice. <laughs> what do you think about kind of, I guess, a smaller, more starter operation, like what we're doing here, really trying to focus on the community and really trying to spotlight, highlight the AM players who most likely would have never had the opportunity to really get any kind of coverage here at a major tournament. Yeah, I think it's great because, you know, when it comes down to it, it's the community and you want to not just see the pro players, but you want to see everyone. And there's a bunch of great, you know, players that might not make it to the pro bracket, but they might the next tournament, you know. So it's great that you guys get to see behind the scenes and everything that goes on because there's so much more to a tournament than just the pro players. Okay, so pretty much, so pretty much what you're saying is Boss Nasty is awesome. Yes, it's awesome. Oh, yes, that's like the f fifth and a half one I got. So, and I think that was just because the person remembered the line. So any shout outs, any mentions? Um, MLG community, I love you. Okay. And thank you for making me the G4 booth, babe. <laughs> awesome. Okay, and your Twitter? Um, Xena G4 girl. Xena with an X. Is, are, is there any hints maybe we can give, like some kind of announcement for an announcement? Is there anything that maybe we can expect from Xena in the future? Oh, I don't know. Maybe there'll be a Halo 4 announcement, but... <laughs> but most likely, probably not. It'll be pretty low-key, but you can always follow me on Twitter. Um, you might find a random picture of me on Reddit. That happened before. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, you know, look for me. We will, no <laughs> doubt. Once again, here with Zena. Zena, thank you so much for the interview. I do appreciate the time. Good luck to you in your future's endeavors. And I will make sure that if I am back here, which I will always try to be, I'll make sure that I always try and get an interview with you, too, as well. Maybe I can get you on a different day maybe dressing up or something for the right. for the viewers Sounds just good. because you're so hot <laughs> so anyways thank you so much we appreciate your time no problem have a good weekend Zena obviously being one of those first girl gamers that did make it up into the esports scene and it's awesome to see such rich culture in MLG and kind of more of an indirect underground history of MLG at least when it comes to girl gamers and their competitive endeavors and placements here at MLG or even other major tournaments as well Zena definitely of course was a force to be reckoned with as well well as still doing big things for MLG and always trying to involve herself with the community. I think it's fantastic that she's still willing to come out here in any capacity, regardless, even if she's not competing anymore. Once again, Zena, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for the interview.